Bonjour, Véronique Véro. Reporting today from Paris, I am at the Cluny Museum, the Museum of the Middle Ages, that also happens to be built right next to Roman baths, taking us back to the origins of the city that was once known as Lutetia. We are in the room that has been restored and preserved the best. It was known as the Frigidarium or the Cold Room. Baths were a place where Romans would come to socialize, exercise. There was a pool, there was a gymnasium, and of course there were baths. So that you would have a, a warm room, a cold room, a hot room, not necessarily in that order. This is the Frigidarium, so the cold room. It is very well known around the world for the height of its vaulted ceiling. It's about 45 feet in height, I believe. It was restored extensively about 10 years ago, and they worked really hard to try and restore the original colors on the walls because the Romans liked colors, and they had disappeared over time. But you can see the different pigments they have managed to either restore or recreate. So this is a very small part of the complex. Where in Gallo-Roman times, people used to come. Lutetia at the time was a city of about 10,000 people. By the first century AD, when these were built, Now, the interesting thing is that the, the Romans really developed Lutetia, the city, on the left bank. And the heart of the Roman city was right where the Pantheon is today. That's where the Forum was. And the baths here were a little closer to the Seine River. But by the end of the third century, the Roman Empire had already started a slow decline. And so what they did is they gradually abandoned what they had built on the left bank to retreat back to the Ile de la Cité, the island in the middle of the Seine River, where the story of Paris started, because it would be a better location strategically, protected by the river, and they erected a wall around it. So they just left behind everything they had built here over the course of several centuries, like these Roman baths. In the 19th century, a lot of work has been done on the museum and on this section of the museum too. It's been used as a depot lapidaire, which is a storage area for ancient stones that have been found in different churches or in different sites in Paris, and you can see examples of these ancient stones. Right here on this wall is a bull from Gallo-Roman times that's dated to the second century AD. There are more here. What people come to see in this section of the museum is the pillar of the boatmen. They were called the Note, N-A-U-T-E-S. And uh, they lived in this area. They worshiped Gallic gods, but also swore allegiance to the Roman Empire. And the stones you see here, these blocks, were on top of each other and formed a pillar that was found under Notre Dame and brought here. So some of the figures you see on these stones are either Gallic gods, Gallic gods, sorry, or Roman gods.
There is more to see in this section of the museum, but only if you reserve a visit. This is the only section open to the public otherwise. There's a whole network of galleries under our feet. The pipes that they use to warm up the water, to bring water here. The room where, they, where the visitors could store their belongings, just like we do today when we go to a swimming pool or a gymnasium. Quite fascinating to see that people lived like this already in the first, second, and third centuries AD. Not just in Paris or Lutetia, as it was known, but in other parts of the world. So voila, I thought you would enjoy seeing this today. I am going to try and live stream from the other section of the museum, the Cluny Museum, which is dedicated to the Middle Ages. Véronique Véro. It was lovely to take you here today. À bientôt.